Kia Welcome to Central News for Wednesday the 9th of April. I'm Anne-Marie Case-Miller. Police have identified the body found in bushes on a bank above the Waikato River as missing Kafia man Trevor Smith. Detective Sergeant Andrew Mortimer says the body found on the riverbank on Sunday has now been identified as the body is that of the 70-year-old who went missing from Waikato Hospital on the 16th of March. Bayou Plenty kiwi fruit growers will be relieved no further fruit flies have been found in the Whangarei area, which could point to the absence of a breeding population. If it is discovered the insect has established in the region, it could have serious consequences for exports of kiwi fruit and other horticultural products. Ministry for Primary Industries reports that no fruit flies have been detected in traps in Zone A or in fruit collected and, ex and examined from controlled area properties after a single male fly was found on April 1st. Tauranga City duck population is decreasing as high temperatures and warm waterways spread a toxic botulism, currently killing about five ducks a week. For the last three months, Tauranga City Council, the Department of Conservation and Fish and Game New Zealand have been retrieving dead or sick ducks from Papamoa's Royal Palm Beach Reserve as concentrated levels of the toxin remain in low water levels. Humans, cats and dogs are generally not affected and Tauranga City Council drainage engineer Peter Morrow says the northern side of the reserve, the exit to Harrison's Cut, is being monitored daily. And there are still 60 tickets left for the official opening of the Avanti Drome this Saturday. Excitement is high, according to Nikki Martin from the Avanti Drome, and the opening ceremony will be held from noon to 3 p.m. with the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge arriving at 1.30. Tickets are $45 for adults, children under 12, $25, and can be purchased from the Avanti Drome reception. Taking a look at the marine forecast now. Heading to the west coast first, Raglan, an easterly of 15 knots expected, a moderate southwest swell easing on Thursday, high tide 6.33 tomorrow morning. Tauranga, easterly of 15 knots with high tide in Tauranga at 3 minutes past 3 tomorrow morning. Still to come on Central News, we go face to face with the lemurs and talk gambling at the supermarket. That's next on Central News. Welcome back to Central News. Animal encounters at the Hamilton Zoo are a great way to get up close and personal with special species and raise money for the Hamilton Zoo Conservation Fund. I went along to the Hamilton Zoo to find out what people can expect on an animal encounter. We have several different encounters that we do. Um, one that is up close and personal, of course, is the ringtail rough lemur one. People can go in and actually, um, to some degree, interact with the animals. It's all done on their terms, but often the animals will take food from them or even hang on to their hands. Um, another one is the tiger um, one, which is protective contact. Uh, we do a chimp one, again protective contact, but you're a bit closer to the chimps. And the rhino one where um, we bring one of the rhinos in and they, um, people can just lean in and perhaps just touch the skin so they get an idea of, of what they feel like. Now 10% of the encounter fee goes to the Hamilton Zoo Conservation Fund. Tell me about that. The Conservation Fund, um, it's, it's really great to be able to be a part of programs like that and we choose um, native species and an exotic species. So we have the Kia Conservation Trust, which is the native one that we contribute to. And we've done 20th Century Tiger and we also um, contribute to Jane Goodall um, Fund, so for the chimps. Tell me about our little friends, the lemurs. What makes them so special? I think because they are quite cute, um, people's perception is, is that they're very cute and of course Madagascar movie probably did a, a lot of good for, for lemurs and they are on, on the whole very, very nice animals. The, the ringtails are very social, they live in groups of about 20 individuals. 
Um, they do have their fights and everything, but um, they just have a very active, gregarious nature. What's a typical day like in the life of a lemur at Hamilton Zoo? Well, they have their food brought to them, so um, we try and feed them at least three times a day, and that's with different fruits and vegetables. And um, they will also uh, browse on the, the foliage that's in the enclosure, and we do bring in different foliage as well. Um, and yeah, I guess they just do the normal grooming things and be as active as they want to or as sleepy as they want to. Hot days, of course, they just want to chill out somewhere. Do, are the lemurs part of the zoo breeding program? They are, um, and we've been very successful with the ringtail breeding over the years, um, and we've had quite a number, of, again, over the years of twins. And in the wild, the twins, um, they, they do um, have twins, but probably often it's only one that'll survive because they have issues such as um, competition for food, for territory, and yeah, life is a little bit hard. They're a bit jittery today, aren't they? They are, and it's possibly because we're approaching like a, a breeding time for them. So um, there's Michaeli's um, the eldest of the boys, so he's a little bit more competitive with his dad. So lots of scent marking going on. The rough lemurs are critically endangered, aren't they? Normally only found on the island of Madagascar. Um, all lemur species are unique to Madagascar. You won't, they, they don't originate anywhere else in the world. And um, so it's, it's very sad that they're also critically endangered as well. Um, these guys in particular, they are uh, preyed upon by people for, as bushmeat and for their, their pelts. And deforestation is a, a big um, factor in their demise. Now you also have uh, the beautiful ring-tailed lemurs who are currently sunning themselves over on the other side of the enclosure. They're also endangered. They are. Um, again, it's, it's um, part habitat loss um, and, you know, just uh, terrible things that are happening in the world today and so their areas are getting smaller and smaller. And they like to roam um, quite a way as a troop and so yeah if you don't have the forest um, that's hard for them. Tell me about the animal encounters here at the zoo. Obviously we're inside the enclosure, we've been hanging out with the, with the roughed lemurs and the, watching the ring tail. It's an amazing experience. It is a lovely experience and you know we're, we're quite proud of this one because um, and we, we only work with the, the male rough lemurs because their behaviour they're a little bit better than the females and the ringtails um, are very social so you know they, they quite enjoy people as well and it's nice for people to be able to have an encounter where they can come in and sit amongst these animals and it's kind of everything's on the animals terms but um, generally people get a, a nice encounter out of it. For more details on the animal encounters, including the lemur ones, go to hamiltonzoo.co.nz. Lotto is preparing to launch a new simple numbers game with no age restriction as part of a suite of initiatives, including supermarket checkout sales. I spoke with Cheryl Smith from the Problem Gambling Foundation to find out more about the lotto game and asked whether we need another one. Yeah, I don't know what the, I think the public perception is that there is plenty of gambling at the moment and there are serious issues with harm that's resulting from gambling. So um, it's become much more normalised now and that worries us at Problem Gambling Foundation because m people have more choices on ways to lose their money. This one seems very simple with only three numbers numbers required. Do you think it's targeted at the younger market? I think people are going to find that if it's a simple thing to do, they're, they're more likely to give it a go than if it's something that they feel complicated and, and they're needing to work out. So again, anything that increases the, the access and that people perceive as an easy thing or a quick thing to do is, starts becoming more risky for harmful gambling. Trials of sales at supermarket checkouts are being rolled out. Are we making it too easy to gamble? I think it's part of the normalising of gambling. You know, once upon a time there was um, racing and, um, and that was pretty much it in New Zealand. Then we developed into sports betting, um, brought in pokey machines, casinos, lotto um, and scratchies, all of that increasing and increasing. And I think in society now there's many more references to gambling that give it the impression of being a normal thing to do when it really should be a considered thing that people do 
in moderation. Is lotto viewed as gambling in the same way as pokies or is it viewed as a bit of fun on your Wednesday and Saturday nights? Yeah, people don't, people don't um, necessarily think of it as gambling. Of course it is, but it's not necessarily causing harm um, unless it's causing a problem for that particular person. So um, I think the public perception is that there are higher risk forms of gambling than others. And some, like buying a raffle ticket is also gambling, but um, it's not so much of an issue as the um, higher risk ones like pokies and casinos. We have new gambling games being introduced and at the same time funding has been cut for the Problem Gambling Foundation. What are the consequences of that? Yeah, I think um, our voice being silenced uh, is, is a very difficult one because where do consumers, where do the public go to be able to have their voice that they're, um, things that they're telling us, that they're suffering with gambling harm, that they don't want more gambling methods in the community or modes, they don't want um, any expansion in that and it's all happening. Um, so I don't know, I think, I think that it's a really difficult one because I can only anticipate more harm resulting. If you or someone you know needs help with problem gambling, call 0800 664621 or go to pgnz.org.nz. Still to come, we find out about removing the Rena from the reef and the Boobops Dragon Boat team. That's next on Central News. Welcome back to Central News. The fight over the Rena wreck continues and local iwi are not pleased at the prospect of the Rena wreck remaining on the reef. They've stated they will fight to have the stricken cargo ship fully removed. The salvers say that's too dangerous a task. Hillary spoke with local iwi representative Buddy McCarty to hear his response. Um, well, of course it's dangerous. All salvage work is dangerous, but these, that's why salvage divers are paid such high uh, you know, big numbers in terms of money because it is dangerous work. You know, everybody acknowledges that. Um, but what it means in this case is that that doesn't prevent it from being removed. It just means you have to be very careful about how you do it. Now, there have been two safety incidents involved with the salvage in recent times. One was a gear failure, um, so it just meant that somebody hadn't checked the gear they were using properly. The other one, as I understand it, was a procedural failure in that they weren't following the things that they're supposed to do to keep themselves safe. So, you know, neither of those things strike me as being out of the ordinary. These are things that were entirely preventable if the proper things had been done. And so that's what this means. You know, you can take it away, you can take it away safely, you just won't be able to do it in a week because you've got to depend on, you know, weather dependent, blah, blah, blah. But. <laughs> The thing is that it can be achieved, it's just got to cost a lot of money because it's got to be done slowly. So who do you think should pay for that? Well, the owners and insurers, they put the damn thing on the reef, so it's their responsibility to take it away. You know, if you crashed your car into the um, roundabout outside there, um, you know, somebody would eventually give you a bill for taking it away. What effect do you think that the wreck has had on the Māori of the reef? Oh, it's, it's, it's having an ongoing effect. It hasn't actually stopped. It started from the moment that thing um, crashed into the reef and is still continuing now. And if they leave it there, there will still be a detrimental effect to the Modi of the reef. Um, Modi is, you know, it's like the life force of the reef. And anything foreign that's outside um, uh, the pristine um, um, approach that, that we normally have to such things, uh, anything that violates that is a violation of that Modi. So spiritually, the reef and our associations with it are weakened, so we're diminished as a people. How does the Modi of the reef affect the people? Uh, well, it's linked to other issues for us. Um, one of them is um, we have this obligation of guardianship, it's called kaitiakitanga, um, in Māori culture, which means that um, it's our, we're obliged to maintain um, the reef and the condition that we inherited it in. So we inherited a pristine reef environment. Um, it's our duty to pass on to the next generation the reef in the same condition. 
the presence of the wreck on there and who knows what uh, in terms of its um, environmental impact means that we can't do that. So um, uh, again, we're diminished, our mana is diminished because we can't do anything about this, but the people with the money can, and that's what we're asking them to do, you know, do this. It's also an infringement on our, our, our rangatiratanga, you know. The government acknowledges that we have rangatiratanga over the things that we um, regard as being worthwhile and precious and that, that uh, we retain. Um, the reef is one of those things. So if the government now says that, yeah, you've got rangatiratanga over that, but we're going to let these foreigners um, leave their um, mess there, um, I mean, it's just an abrogation of that whole principle that the government is committed to upholding under the treaty. So, uh, during the, we've currently got a claim before the Waitangi Tribunal um, on these same issues, and uh, we're asking the tribunal to make a recommendation that the government will enforce the removal notice that was issued to the owners in 2011, two years ago. Um, and um, we found out that in the course of um, investigating our claim, it turned out that there were three confidential secret agreements signed between the owners and the government, um, which we're not allowed to talk about. Um, but um, last year, earlier last year, some of that information got out, <coughs> and we know <coughs> We know because it's on the public record that one of the agreements says that if the government helps the owners um, to obtain the resource consents to leave the wreck behind, that the owners will then pay the government an incentive fee of 10.4 million. So, you know, these kind of things just make us go, whoa, there was nobody talked with us about that. Nobody talked with anybody else in New Zealand as far as we can see about that. How come this foreign company can do this stuff in our part of the world and just walk away by kicking the, flicking the government 10 mil. Um, it's just unbelievable. And so there's a clear breach of treaty principles as far as that's concerned. And you will take that to the tribunal? Well, yeah, we'll, but that'll be uh, one of the main planks of our opposition to any resource consent. Um, but, you know, let's deal with one step at a time. So just go through the tribunal process first, which is to demonstrate that there has been a clear breach of the treaty. Yeah. Up next on Central News, we speak with members of the winning Boo Bops Dragon Boat team. <music> Kia ora, welcome back to Central News. A local dragon boating team, the Boo Bops, have been national champs three years in a row and are fundraising to get themselves to the World Championships in San Francisco. Hillary went along to a training session and found out how much muscle goes into paddling one of these boats. Oh, it means that we defended our title and that's what um, we wanted to do and um, it was, that was really important and it also um, means an awful lot to the team and especially to the coach. So it, it's all about you know, getting a good time and, and maintaining our momentum and um, retaining our titles. Now, Julie, you guys are going to the Worlds. It sounds quite expensive to get 20 women there. Have you guys been doing lots of fundraising? Absolutely. We've been fundraising for nearly two years now, and um, we do a whole heap of things like garage sales at flea markets, and we do sausage sizzles and movie nights and quiz nights. And Singing at old people's homes. <laughs> we do heaps. Yeah, we've raised... Oh, we're getting... Yeah. 30,000. Coming up to 30,000. Yeah, but we've still got a wee way to go. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about the worlds? I mean, where are they? Sure, they're in Sarasota, which is in Florida, and there'll be 2,000 breast cancer survivors paddling there, so it's going to be massive, yeah. They happen every two years? No, more four than that, years. about four years. Four years, yeah. This is the third year that you guys have won the national champ. So you are you guys getting a little bit of a name for yourself in the dragon boating circles? Um, yeah, it's pretty prestigious, isn't it, to be the national champs. Um, and we've worked really hard to maintain our title, but they are chasing, they're, they're... Closing the gap. Closing the gap, yeah. So we're having to do extra training and be really work on our fitness and, yeah, just to stay one step ahead. I've got to know, what is behind the name Boobops? 
Okay, well, it's a play on words. It's obviously we're all breast cancer survivors, so it's boob ops, as in boob op operation, boob operations, but it's also a play on Bay of Plenty, which is where we represent. How did it all start? Well, the movement to do dragon boating started in Canada um, in the 80s. A doctor recognised dragon boating as one of the best sports for women who had breast cancer and for their recovery post-surgery because there's a lot of um, women used to keep their arms still and they recognised that they needed to change that and actually move our arms. So dragon boating was seen as the best sport to be doing that. And how did you guys get together? Um, a group of women probably started off about 10 years ago. We've just had our 10th birthday. So yeah, they got together 10 years ago and fundraised like crazy to get enough money for a boat. They didn't have enough to have 100% uh, breast cancer. So they had a team of supporters who also um, were in the boat who went breast cancer. And then over time, we built up the numbers, which is <laughs> unfortunate, but yeah. You can support the Boobops by visiting their website boobops.co.nz. Taking a look at the weather for the Waikato now. Hamilton, mainly fine, chance of an afternoon shower and a high of 25 expected with a low of 13. Paroa, fine, maybe an afternoon shower with southeasterlies and a high of 24. Matamata, your high 22, Te Awamutu 25 and Tokoroa 22 degrees expected. Heading to the Bay of Plenty now and expect a mainly fine Thursday in Tauranga with a high of 24 degrees. Te Poke, cloudy with a few showers and a high of 21. That's Central News for today. Make sure you like us on our Facebook page and let us know if there's news or an event in your community. Thanks for joining me tonight. I'm Anne-Marie K. Smiller. I'll see you tomorrow. Ka kite anō. been an Alpha Media production, a division of Television Media Group. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.